Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles, but we're going to talk about Hasbro. We're going to talk about Wizards of the Coast. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about artificial intelligence because the CEO of Hasbro has said that they want to use AI to generate future Dungeons and Dragons content. We're not just talking about the art. So if you had any doubts whatsoever about whether or not Wizards was going to double and triple down on AI, here's your answer directly from the horse's mouth, the CEO of Hasbro saying, yeah, they've got years of stories and years of content that they can strip mine, feed into AI and have infinite adventures. So I have to wonder if this isn't part of the reason that they laid off so many people from the Dungeons and Dragons division of Wizards. They don't need them. We don't need anybody to write new modules. We don't need anybody to create new monsters. We don't, we've got 40, 50 years of content of text. And that's kind of how he re refers to it that we can just regurgitate. Doesn't that concern you? I mean, for all these people that attacked us for years and I said, look, uh, Hasbro, Hasbro is not the same company that you grew up with. Wizards of the Coast is not the same company it was 20 years ago. And I got attacked, constantly attacked. And I said, hey, these, these guys are no good nicks. I hate to break it to you, um, but they are virtue signaling hard and they're cultivating uh, an audience of progressive people, not because they believe it, but they're using it as a shield. Since then, since I kind of said it might be time to walk away from Wizards like three or four years ago, um, let's see, we had the OGL 1.1 debacle where they basically wanted to steal your stuff, right? We had the uh, Pinkertons getting sent to a guy's house because he got some magic cards early. We had them overproducing magic cards to the point where it could destroy the hobby. We had them laying people off at Wizards right before Christmas. Uh, we had the people that are left at Wizards throwing shade at the OG creators of Dungeons and Dragons to celebrate the 50th anniversary of, of the game. You know, they had to make sure that you knew that the original Dungeons and Dragons was problematic. And we had to bring that up to celebrate the 50th anniversary. You could have just like, like not mentioned it at all, you know, but no, we had to do that. And now we've got AI and they got busted a couple times in the past and they're going right back to it. Every time they get busted using AI artwork or whatever, because remember guys, they got caught last year reportedly using AI art. And they're like, oh, we didn't know that the artist that we hired whose whole Twitter bio is about how they do AI art. We didn't know that that person was going to turn turn in AI artwork. Oh my golly gee, thanks for letting us know, guys. So they put a statement out and they're like, we're not going to use AI uh, in the final product. And then it turned out that they were using AI in the final product and they were using AI for marketing materials. Like they love this stuff. This is, they're, they're going to do it guys. They're going to do it. Now they're going to use AI to generate adventures because Chris Cox is a video game guy. So let's, let's talk about this before we get into it any further, further, I'm already into it pretty far. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys. Check out the d podcast, the clownfish TV podcast on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast. So Let's talk about this. This is coming from Wargamer. Molly Russell writes this article. Hasbro CEO optimistic about AI and D&D and Magic the Gathering's future. Future D&D and Magic the Gathering content could come from AI if the bets of Hasbro's CEO are right. That's what he's saying. You know, he talked to VentureBeat on March 1st, and he talked about Magic and Dungeons and & Dragons. And those, those franchises, those IP... He wants to turn them into a video game. Cox cites a few experiments Hasbro has already conducted with AI in the interview. These include a virtual Ouija board. Yep, Hasbro owns them. And a free online version of Trivial Pursuit with AI-generated questions. The last one apparently boosted the original Trivial board game sales by 30%. Cox radiates excitement, but it seems the tabletop gaming community is much more skeptical of artificial intelligence. Hasbro's subsidiary, Wizards of the Coast has already apologized twice for using AI art and content, once in a D&D book and once in a Magic the Gathering ad. And um, th there, it seems to me that there's been more than that. Uh, apparently, 
one of the cards, if I remember correctly, one of the uh, magic cards used a background or something and they just kind of like inverted it and filtered it or I don't know. Several smaller RPG publishers banned AI content from their products, claiming they wish to protect the livelihoods of human creators. Additionally, the RPG community has prohibited its use on Dungeon Master's Guild, one of the largest online D&D marketplaces. Many fans have become hyper vigilant in their search for AI to the point that false accusations prompted Wizards to deny its use in the upcoming D&D Player's Handbook. Yeah, so sometimes people are getting caught up in this net and they're not actually uh, using AI. Now, I want to disclaim right up front with the Adventure Engine, which is a, a tabletop system we're, we're currently developing, and uh, we're hoping to crowdfund it probably at the end of the year, I'm thinking, I'm thinking given, given where we're at with it. But, uh, you know, people have called me out for using AI in thumbnails. I don't mind using AI in thumbnails because it's disposable content. I can guarantee you we're not going to use AI in the actual game. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. I'm actually uh, eyeing up some artists right now and, uh, you know, I'll be doing some of the art. And yeah, so uh, and as far as the content goes, I mean, other than probably using something like Grammarly to to make sure that we don't misspell anything, I don't foresee any of that being AI generated um, in fact, that is a, a big no-no. I know a lot of the crowdfunding platforms right now, if you're using AI in any capacity, uh, they don't want you on there or you have to disclaim it. But uh, I think there's a big difference between thumbnails that are disposable and a finished product. And I think that, uh, you know, even if people are okay with AI art, if they don't care, and I think the general public probably doesn't care, it probably should be disclaimed somewhere. I mean, it's kind of like GMO food or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think if people want to avoid it, they probably should disclaim it or definitely not try to pass it off as, as hand-drawn art, at least. So head magic designer Mark Rosewater previously said he believed the technology would one day be used as a design tool in the trading card game, for example. It seems to echo Cox dreams of AI content. Again, I think this is the reason why they got rid of so many people. I think a lot of these people probably weren't on board the AI train and he's like, well, you're going to get in my way and you cost us too much and you're gone. Hasbro CEO is conscious of the company's responsibilities though. In the venture beat interview, he repeats the word respect several times. <sighs> yeah. You respect the franchise when you throw the OG creators uh, like Gary Gygax under the bus, you respect the franchise when you try to, screw OG creators uh, out of their royalties. You respect the franchise when you call everything that came before 2015 problematic, even if it actually isn't. I'm just saying, I, I wouldn't believe them. <laughs> These experiments apparently must respect creators and their ownership of work as well as the consumers. The company's experiments with AI seem to be in very early research and development stages, but Cox says we will see more ideas from Hasbro about how to incorporate AI into digital and physical games in the future. Uh, with trust in Wizards of the Coast at a major low after the OGL controversy and Hasbro layoffs, we're wondering how the D&D &D and Magic the Gathering communities will receive this news. Oh my God, guys, it's almost as if Clownfish TV was right that you needed to find an alternative to Wizards of the Coast. Now, at the time, I was like, hey, the fact that they were throwing shade at um, Grognards, the fact that they're throwing shade at, uh, you know, the TSR version of, of Dungeons and & Dragons and calling things racist and whatever that really weren't, um, that for me was enough to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, I'm out. Like, they, like you can say, hey, um, we don't do things that way anymore, but you don't have to like denounce everything that came before, especially if you had nothing to do with it. And especially if you had nothing to do with it, you should not claim credit that like, well, this is our D and D now. And it's, it's moved so far beyond what those stupid, stinky old white men made, you know, Midwestern flyover state dudes back in the day. We're, we're so much more progressive now. You're so progressive, you're using AI. You're going to use robots to you know, create the game going forward. And someday you're going to lose your job too because they don't need you. They got a robot to do it. So if you go out to the original article, uh, he does talk a lot about AI. And I think I saw this article before. This coming from Venture, Venture Beat. Okay, so this is where, this is where he talks about D&D &D in particular. 
Um, they said on AI in particular, there was an interesting example today with the real time franchise having its own large language model. It's an interesting response on the topic of both responsible AI and respecting IP, making sure that only licensed things can go into a language model, large language model. This particular solution is to put only that IP into the large language model. Does that sound at all appealing for the franchises you have at Hasbro? So Chris Cox says, first off, we're doing R&D efforts around AI. I think most major entertainment and IP holders are at least thinking about it. The key there is the responsible use of it, which is what he said. He said they want to delight audiences. They need to make sure that we do it in a way that respects the creators. Now, this is where he talks about D&D in particular. And this is why I'm talking, like, they could potentially get rid of writers and like, we've got so much D and D already that we can just generate modules on the fly. The advantage we have, it's funny. This is cutting edge technology and Hasbro is a 100 year old company, which you don't usually think it is you usually think there's a threat there. But when you talk about the richness of the lore and the depth of the brands, D and D has 50 years of content that we can mine. We're going to mine that content, literally thousands of adventures that we've created. You haven't created shit. <laughs> you just came in. You just came in a couple of years ago from Microsoft. Uh, thousands of adventures, a lot of them predating Hasbro's acquisition of Wizards and Wizards acquisition of TSR. I just want to put that out there. Um, and this is what I think the OGL might have actually been about in a roundabout way. Like, oh, this is more... Uh, content we can add to our D and D bot, you know, like, Oh, you made this really cool rule for D and D. You made some really cool monsters. Cool. We will add your, your uniqueness to our own Borg identity, you know, and it'll, it'll get chewed up and spit out by the AI. Literally thousands of adventures we've created, probably tens of millions of words we own and can leverage. Magic the Gathering has been around for 35 years, more than 15,000 cards. We can use something like that. Peppa Pig has been around for 20 years. We can get a lot of bacon out of that bitch. It's <laughs> had hundreds of thousands of hours of published content. Transformers. I've been watching Transformers since I was a kid in the 80s. We can leverage all of that to be able to build very interesting and compelling use cases for AI that can bring our characters to life. We can build tools that aid in content creation for users or create really interesting gamified scenarios around them. Okay, so I think, again, what they're talking about is taking all of the existing lore that they've acquired Disney style and then just regurgitating it forever and ever and ever and ever, you know, and having AI composited into, you know, slightly new things, variations of old things because AI currently does not come up with its own ideas, whole cloth. And I mean, you know, I'm just saying that's pretty sad. That means that, you know, and I was talking in another video about D and D and how depressing it is that we haven't really had a new campaign setting in quite a while. Uh, I think it's been God, what, 20 years, 15 years since they've had a truly new campaign setting. They just keep going back to the same places, but when they're screwing people over like Margaret wise and Tracy Hickman and Ed Greenwood, why, what, what incentive is there to, for a, an author to come into D and D and create a new campaign setting, a new campaign world, you know, new characters, new monsters, new magic, new, what, what incentive is there? So you're just going to strip mine and regurgitate the stuff that's already been done, including works by Ed Greenwood and Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. And they're probably not very happy about it, but they're just going to keep going back to the same well again and again and again. The question is, will gamers or will they move on to other systems? And I think I already know the answer to that. I think we're already starting to see it. I think Dungeons and Dragons will be a video game for normies and actual tabletop gamers will probably move on to another system <laughs> or just go back and play the old stuff. I don't know, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.